Welcome to Awesome Wildlife Effort. We're here today at the Mississippi River with Professor Richard Aubrey of Tulane University in social entrepreneurship. Tulane has taken on a tremendous task, dealing with the epoxy zone down at the basin of the Mississippi River. Rick, welcome to the show. Charles, it's a pleasure to be here. Tulane is developing challenges for a host of reasons. There are significant social challenges throughout the world and challenges have proven to be a very effective way to find solutions that you otherwise would never come across. And universities have never taken on in a significant way this new methodology called grand challenges of inviting competitors to come up with ideas and to go out in the marketplace and the best solution wins. Everybody knows Charles Lindbergh. Other folks don't know there were hundreds of other people trying to solve the problem of getting across the Atlantic. Uh, there was no grant that was given to Charles Lindbergh. There was no operating funds. If you got it right, you won. He won. A lot of folks know about something called the X Prize that was able to figure out how to get cars that could have higher gas mileage or how to get a rocket ship into space in a certain way. So the idea of challenges has reemerged as a really successful way to do it. What was somewhat groundbreaking for Tulane was to say universities have a unique set of resources and talents, the professors that work there, the knowledge that exists within the universities. Let's put those in service of this new methodology of grand challenges and run a competition from within the university to spur innovation from around the world. The dead zones affect species, the dead zones affect ecosystems, the dead zones affect the lives of fisher people who rely upon being able to go out every day and get the kind of catches that they need. If there's no fish available to them, communities dissolve. The dead zones this year are huge. Now, dead zones are a naturally occurring uh, situation. So, like many other things, it's not that dead zones will be completely prevented or that they don't serve some purpose, but the issue is the scale and the magnitude and the human contribution to what should be a normally occurring phenomenon of a very small scale that the ecosystem can adjust to, which now is completely distorted by man-made inputs. Farmers have a difficult challenge. They're heroes in terms of meeting the world challenge of feeding as many people as possible. So they need to be incentivized to grow as much food as they possibly can. Unfortunately, one of the consequences of that is nitrogen gets applied to fields in order to maximize yields, but the nitrogen comes off the fields, ends up in the river, which comes down to the Gulf, and that's the significant source of the dead zone challenge. What we need to do is give farmers not a policy, not a prescription, not a set of regulations, but a tool tool that helps them achieve the simultaneous goals of maximizing the amount of food that they're able to grow while minimizing the amount of nitrogen they need to use in order to achieve that. Anybody can submit worldwide. It can be anything from large corporations that have research and development teams that for a variety of reasons want to take on this particular challenge, or it can be the quintessential person in their shed in their garage who's got this big idea and builds the solution. Our judges, which are experts in the area, are absolutely interested in who comes up with the best idea and not what they had done before this. Phase one now, all comers come on in. Phase two, the five best go into the ground to see that it works. On a farm in Northeast Louisiana, each of the five semifinalists will each have five plots of land to test the specific technology that they come up with during an entire growing season. Phase three, knock down, drag out fight between the two finalists. Best person wins and gets a check for a million dollars. We chose dead zones because it's not just a New Orleans problem, but it's something that affects the entire world. And our donor, Phyllis Taylor, who came up with the idea of Tulane sponsoring a prize, said, I want to solve a problem that affects New Orleans and Louisiana but also has implications throughout the world. And after looking at many different challenges, we came up with coming up with solutions to address the dead zones here. Huge problem for Louisiana, huge problem for New Orleans, has universal applications. And so a solution that works here will have applications throughout the world. Tulane is partnering with a whole array of folks who really want to solve this problem. We're not the first folks to identify dead zones as a critical issue. People have been working on this issue for many 
years. But there's lots of challenges in terms of the trade-offs that have to be taken on in order to solve the problem. Rick, I want to thank you for being our guest on Awesome Wildlife Effort. And congratulations to Tulane for taking the initiative to solve the hypoxic zone problem in the Gulf of Mexico and implementing it worldwide, and also showing people how to create challenges. We have a great experience here with solving this problem. I can already sense that you're working with the right people and bringing people to become involved and passionate about addressing it, which has got to be half the problem, as well as technology, but having people committed to solving it. We're going to be right back. <music>